Hello and welcome. <laughs> Good day and welcome. Yes, it's <laughs> iPhase Drivers Show number two. It is indeed. I'm iPhase owner Gary and. Uh, uh, but I'll be doing. <laughs> I had to get you to say that. Thank you. Yep. So as usual, we'll start with the news, and I guess the main news, which is also the feature of this program, is H two six four has been released. That's the range update, not yep. the not the the charging update, um, which some people got confused with. But uh, so that's still to come at some point, maybe. Yep. Um, we'll talk a bit about that later. So some other news, though. I, I think we might as well cover while we're here. Um, I don't know if you've seen, but a better route planner have issued an app today yes i have yes uh, both for android and ios i've just been playing a bit with the android version uh, i've been really playing good. with the ios one <laughs> now i don't know if you noticed this but i found a, a problem with the units um yes you change the units in the profile but they don't seem to be reflected in the plan um, well on i don't know about the android one but on the ios one what happens is you change the units and in, in the preferences as you say but it changes the plan as in if you put in a route with multiple waypoints yeah each section between waypoints it gives you the distance for example in my case in miles but the overall journey distance is in kilometers yes that's interesting isn't it yeah yeah i think that's what i've got as well i think yeah looking at just have a quick look yeah that's exactly what i'm seeing as well so i got yeah. Kilometers as, as the main thing. Okay, that's a slight bug. They'll just need to sort Yeah, out. I mean, sure obviously, that, sure you're that not going to get a day one release with with zero bugs. So No, but it's pretty impressive, I have to say. I, I thought so. The only thing I didn't like about it um, is that on the website, you can manually input a state of charge to charge to. Yes, you can't um, do that on this version. Yeah, it doesn't seem to let you override its settings, so it's very difficult then to... For example, it might give you two charging stops of 35% each, where I would rather do one charging stop of 70%, yeah. maybe on it, you know, and you can't set it. You don't seem to be able to do that on the app where you can on the website. I guess these things will come. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. they're not taking the, app, the website away. You still can use the mobile version of the website. Exactly. So, so you've got the best of both worlds. Yeah. There goes my earphone. Let's put oh. that back in. <laughs> so I can Hearing hear what fell out. Hearing, yeah. <laughs> Well, at least, at least this way I can monitor what the microphone's doing. So, yes, <laughs> so, right, far, so, good, though, so far, so good. So far, so good. Yeah. So hopefully, we sorted out the issues from last last edition. Yeah. So that's really good. I think the better route planner looks excellent. Yeah, I, th I thought it was great to see the app. I mean, the website worked great, but the app is just—it's just that little bit more slick. It's more designed for the format that you you know of the phone. Yeah, um, yeah. where putting things into the website can be a little bit awkward on a on a mobile, uh, yeah. you know, on a, like mobile Safari, obviously for me or yeah. Chrome or whatever. It's yeah. not always the easiest thing to do quickly. Um, yep, so definitely good to see that. Um, other bits of news. Um, obviously, we've had a quite a few uh, releases of Wattcat since the last time we had a, had a show. Yes. <laughs> so this is the Android um, alternative to Jaguar's remote app. Perhaps sort to talk a bit about Jaguar's remote app as well, because there's been a few issues with that over the over the last few months. <laughs> Connectivity, etc., yeah. which seem to be mainly back end. Um, I don't know from your point of view on the on the iPhone, but from my side, it seems to be resolved now. The Android version seems to be reasonably stable. Yeah, I must admit, I didn't have as many issues. Some people were having, you know, it ran on for weeks on end. With mine, I had it for maybe three or four days where it wasn't reporting journeys. And then another probably three or four days where it always seemed to be a journey behind. Yep. So like I would go from, say, from home to work, the app would show me being at home. I would then drive from work to home and the app would show me being at work. <laughs> you know, but then that was only three or four days and it sorted itself out. And since then, for me, it's been relatively stable. There's been a couple of times where I've had issues connecting, but, but not many. Like you say, it seems back end. Yeah. Um, but it does seem odd that some people seem to be more plagued with problems than others. You would think everyone would have the same. You would, indeed. Although maybe they're hitting different servers. It's always possible. Always possible, yeah. Load no balancing and all that sort of stuff. So going back to Wattcat, um, I love this app. It's really good. Um, it is I did phenomenal. The, the, on, the, on the forums, done a fabulous job of it. He's added a few new features to it. Um, he's got the um, journeys now being shown properly. He's, he's obviously got had charge logging and things on there before 
um, added a few more details to the sc details screen. Um, some of the remote control options now work as well, so you can, you can do the climate control and things like that. It's just a brilliant app, really, and it's so nicely laid out as well. It just looks good. It looks yeah, really good. I agree, and I like. Um, I don't know if I can't remember if I mentioned this to you before or not, Gary, but I actually bought a cheap Android phone, um, partly for WhatCat and partly for this other app that I'm messing around with, which pulls data from the OBD port. Um, and I've been using that. So I have now finally used WhatCat. Um, and I love things like the, the details page where it gives you yeah. an awful lot of information about your vehicle. Um, you know, stuff that you don't really need, but it's kind of nice to see you with your, <laughs> you know. Well, the one, that, one I like, do like on there is the 12 volt battery state. That's what I was about to say. That's incredibly <laughs> useful, though it does seem to have some issues with the figures it comes back with i don't think they're a hundred percent spot on yet i think it needs some fine tuning there well i think it's put i mean that's the api generally i mean the exactly API. yeah and we'll talk a bit more about that with, with 264 as well but uh, yeah. one thing i do like about on, on it is the ability on it to set wake-up times which does seem to work <laughs> yes it does i've i've noticed wake up time by wake up times do you mean when you're away for more than four days yeah or, yeah, the, yeah. The, the deep sleep stuff so because the one on the on the other app i've had had a few problems where it's not woken up on, when i've returned from trips was this one ah, every right. single time time it, it works so I, I mean it should be using the same api i can't see why it why yeah, it'd be different that, that but doesn't make sense but then so many things don't don't <laughs> um but yeah and what i what i like as well is that he's managed to incorporate almost all the functionality of the original the jaguar app but added a whole lot more besides, and and you just think, why, why does it require a third party to do this? Yeah. I mean, the one thing which a lot of people like, like which I, I don't actually use myself, is you can set a max state of charge. Yeah. Um, so it, it that, that's a little bit flaky because it, it does rely on your phone keeping the, the app running and not shutting it down and that's things like that. Is, yeah. yeah. Uh, but but that works well. And there was one bit of controversy um with the. the the, the battery health side he had on there which obviously yeah. once we as we'll talk about the h264 update but that that messes up the api for that that figure so uh, yeah, the state, yeah the state the state of charge was completely wrong so he's now hidden that and you can turn it on if you want to which i think is yeah. a very good way of doing it but he's a great guy guy and he, he certainly so hopefully we'll get him on one of the shows shortly i've been talking that would to be him good yeah one, one thing that. i just want to throw in there as well on that state of health thing is that my the app I'm messing around with that uses the OBD port also pulls a state of health from somewhere, so you can get that direct from the OBD port, and it the figure it's reporting pretty much ties in with the figure I got from Jaguar as well. So it, it is possible to get quite an accurate figure from Good. from the car. Well, you'd, you'd, you'd hope so from the OBD port. I mean, that, that's, that's, well, yeah, I mean, obviously that's, that's what, what Jaguar. That's, that's where, they, where the technicians are plugging into to get the exactly, information. Yeah. So, so as long as they've got the codes to, to unlock it, I'm sure they can do but that. The Jaguar one, when they plug it in, it gives you an individual state of health for each of the 36 cells. Yeah. Or 36 packs, should I say. Um, and this pulls it all into an average. Now, well, I don't know. The thing I'm not sure about is whether it pulls a single figure, whether the car itself generates an average number or whether it pulls all 36 figures and then creates its own average number. I'm not sure, but it was pretty much spot on to my, my report from JAG. Okay, well, it's good, well, it's good to know. Yeah. yeah. Look, looking forward to seeing that when it's a bit more out in the open. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's all very, it's not even hush-hush, but it's, you know, it's being beta tested under an NDA at the moment. So yeah. Yeah. there's limits well, to what we're allowed to discuss. Well, stuff then. So, shall we talk H264? Let us talk <laughs> H264. So, H264 is the range update. And actually, I was going to say that letters should be going out to people. I don't think any letters have actually gone out yet. Like, you know, I, was, I was just discussing this the other day with somebody. Um, and I, he hasn't had a letter. Neither of us have heard of anybody saying they've had a letter. Maybe the dealers are pushing back on Jaguar and say, don't send them out, we're too busy, we're too busy. <laughs> Do you know, I actually think, and I might be wrong on this, but I've got a sneaking suspicion that dealers are holding it back till after Christmas New Year. 
would make sense. I mean, they're, they're busy up, they're, they're short staffed exactly. and busy up to Christmas, so exactly they, they may now not want that to go, go out, out to public knowledge. Yeah. Although, obviously, it has snuck out there. Yeah. I've told, told so a few people about it. <laughs> I may have mentioned it occasionally. <laughs> yeah, occasionally. So, yeah, so what does the H264 update give us? Well, interestingly, it gives us an awful lot, I feel, and I, I, I get. I think it's slightly disingenuous when people, and I don't, sorry, that sounds like I'm having a go at you now because you just described it as the range update. Well, that's what Jaguar call it. So. <laughs> that's what Jaguar call it, but it's, it's slightly disingenuous, I feel, to just call it that because it it underplays a lot of the stuff that it does over and above the range. Um, I know that range is the thing that everybody is fascinated with and locked into focusing on with, with EVs generally and the I-PACE. You know, there's no exception to that, but but you know, it does so many other things as well, as you say. I mean, some of them improves the range, improves the regen. Now that in part helps towards the range, but that's not the be all and end all of the regen improvement. It actually makes it more drivable with regen, um, which is one of the things that I was particularly pleased with, which we'll go on to discuss in a minute. But um, you know. You you had information about the suspension as well. Yeah, so so this is I, I didn't actually get this from Jaguar. So this has come from quite a few of my viewers. They've all said that they felt that the suspension, um, the air suspension, had improved. Now I have heard that handling was improved in some of the modes. So maybe that's a a, 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 a knock on from that. Um, yeah. And so, um, but what I found is this, stability over rough ground is much better so my car ha had this habit of, of sort of going side to side um if you go over a bump on the right side it would start going that and then come back and settle itself but except yeah. before it didn't settle itself it, it would keep going like that for a little while rocking the boat time yeah. but now it just settles it hits can, once I, ask, it, can I ask what mode you're in for that it... yeah, be eco. Um, yeah most of the time i drive an eco and uh, I flick, flick it just to um, sport occasionally, but most of the time it drives. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, but, uh, and that was used to be definitely the case. It used to do this sort of side to side motion, but now it just hits once and then, and it does one and, and then it sort of settles and it's okay. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. If, I mean, I've not seen anything in the release notes. My contacts aren't saying anything about it, but it definitely seems to be there. I mean, yeah. I've, I've, I've had this, I mean, when I spoke to you about this before earlier, I, I, I was, a bit concerned it might be just me getting confirmation bias because obviously I, I'd um, Easy heard, to happen. heard about this from other people and talk, but I actually took someone in the car the other week who's often complained of feeling slightly seasick in the car that we go over a certain piece of road and they said they immediately commented on how much better the car was yeah so <laughs> without being prompted they didn't even know it'd been updated so yeah. there, there's there's obviously something there um my, my personal first instinct when I drove the car afterwards was in eco mode. That's why I asked you about which yeah. mode you felt it was in. In eco mode, my air suspension, and like you say, it could be confirmation bias, but it definitely feels noticeably firmer in eco mode. Yeah. To we'll me. That. Yeah. So, so the other thing they have done in eco mode is they've split the torque between the front and the rear drive, especially when you're at um, cruising speed at 70 mile an hour on the motorways. Yep. Um, so I, I noticed today when I was driving that there's actually a slightly different tone to the motors when, that, when that's yeah. doing that. Um, not, not unpleasant, it's just it's noticeable that it, it is slightly different. That definitely makes a huge difference on, on the range, um, as yep. we'll discuss in a minute. Yeah. Um, but the other thing which, which I've had a commented to me a few times is about throttle response. And I've actually had this confirmed now that they've actually adjusted the way the throttle works so you're not get, you're not able to accelerate any faster. It's just they've moved the way where the the throttle is logarithmic on the throttle. So it yeah. feels like you get a bit more oomph as you put your foot down in eco, yeah. or and particularly in sport. In sport, it's very noticeable. Interesting, you say that. I'll I'll check this out. But via my OBD port, I can get the you know you can get a, yeah. a digital response. And at the moment, the throttle position range or I say at the moment, prior to H264, the throttle position range only went from 0 to 70. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see if they've if varied if, it. Yeah, that would be definitely interesting to get that stat. So, yeah, so that there's a lot of things going on here. Um, now, the other thing which has happened in this one is some updates to the way charging works. 
not an improvement in charging speed because obviously no. that's one which hasn't come, but the, the actual way charging starts. Now, this is a, a bit of a workaround for some of the tolerance issues that the well, we talked about the CCS charge standard yeah. last time, it's just not a st standard. So, Jaguar are following it to the letter, other people may not be following it to the letter quite so much. I think they've toned back a bit on that letter yeah. <laughs> um, because today I was able to charge on one of the engineer chargers, which had previously had caused me an issue. Yeah. Now, interesting, I, I, I got a full charge of it, no problem at all. But when I went to unplug, I did actually get a high voltage warning, Ooh. which is which is interesting. So, but before I was getting a high voltage warning as soon as I plugged it in. So I wonder yeah. if the isolation check is only happening at the end. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but, Possible. <laughs> yeah. So maybe that's a, a little bit more tweaking to be done. That, but the fact is, yeah. I can charge. I can charge now a load of more charges. Um, yeah, I mean, I have yet to do my uh, charge play Scotland exploration uh, trip. I'm gonna. I've got the video planned for that sometime between Christmas and New Year. We're gonna go out and film that. It'll be the exact same route as I've done before. However, at the weekend, which will come up when we're discussing range as well but the weekend i did a 280 mile round trip not a road trip for a video it was a christmas shopping trip i was picking my parents up from home so i didn't want to be <laughs> you know sitting being abu dhabi dude for vast chunks of the journey so it wasn't videoed but i used an ingenie charger which i've used on one video which has already been published uh, which i think was the house of dunn video and I used it again on one which is still in the edit phase, uh, but should be coming out fairly soon. So I've used that charger twice. Both times, it wouldn't charge the car until I rebooted the charger. But on Saturday, I used that same charger again and deliberately didn't reboot it just to see. And it started first time. Now, it's very, you know, it's hardly a, 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 a wall of evidence, but that one charger at least on that one occasion started could have been a fluke but i'll find out more as i say once i do my charge play scotland trip now what was also interesting is i know you've all had a, you've, you've you've got the magic car which can charge on electricity we all know that <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but my my magic car doesn't doesn't isn't able to charge on electricity normally yeah. and certainly was not able to used to be able to charge on electricity at the extra services at peterborough uh, yeah. i tried that yesterday and it charged absolutely fine the first time Wow. So and I've obviously heard done something. a few other people say the same thing. Um, yeah. I've got a, a Scottish group of owners that, we, that we've, we're all part of a WhatsApp group. Um, and I, there's a few of them on there that have commented as well. Yeah, so, so I think there's definitely some improvements on charging. To me, it seems to ramp up slower, which is one thing I did say before. It was a, yeah. a, a change I didn't really want because it means we end up all end up charging slower. Um, I know... There's some discussion going on at the moment whether it's better. Certain, I mean, certain, some drivers have been asked this by Jaguar, so um, whether it's better to have faster charging or more reliable charging. Which would you prefer? Are you allowed to say <laughs> but, both? Yeah, I'd like both, but <laughs> but it may not be possible to have both in some circumstances. So yeah, no. Maybe there's something um, viewers can comment on below because I think that that's. It's definitely an interesting discussion. Yeah, I'd love to hear what people think of that, actually. I think for that... me personally, I would actually, if I had to choose one out of the two, I would probably say more reliable. I think if, you could, if I could have more reliable and the peak speed I can get when I have reliable charging. So so yep. if I could get that sort of 100 kilowatt on a 150 kilowatt charger for that first five or six minutes and then go down to 80, 80 kilowatts and, and keep it that across the board, which I got a couple of times on ionity charges. Before. Yeah. I'd be really happy with that uh, yeah. if it was reliable. And uh, I don't really need to have 120 kilowatt peak. I think, no, I think hundred kilowatt peak is fine as long as it's consistently over a reasonable time. And, and exactly. I mean, my ionity video, which I know you've seen, um, if I had, being able to, if I could get that level of charge all the time, and it was nothing like the claimed zero to 80 in 40 minutes or whatever it is, but I was getting, well, I went from 18 to 80 in 43 minutes. And that, you know, in all honesty, I was very pleased with that at the time. I've had slower charges since then on Ionity. Um, so personally, yeah, I, I'm with you. If I could get that kind of figure, 
sustain that 100 for a little bit longer, you know, maybe, as you say, five or six minutes, that would bring that charging time down to probably about 45 minutes for, let's say, 10 to 80 percent, I would think. That'd be really good. Now, the other thing H.264 does bring is some improvement for charging in cold weather, which is noticeable. <laughs> yeah, um, I, again, charged, uh, obviously, on Saturday on that, on that road trip that we did, uh, charged twice in the end. Um, and it, it felt quicker, but not, not massively so. No. Um, but they were 50 kilowatt chargers, so... Yeah, so, so I, I, I can only go, and it is slightly inco- uh, inc- uncomparable because the, the weather was slightly different. So I, I did one lot charging in four degrees, one lot charging in eight degrees. So that, obviously that can make a big difference. Yeah. But prior to H264, on one particular charger, I got 24 kilowatt charging across average across the charge. Yeah, and afterwards I got about thirty-eight kilowatts, which is still not yeah. good enough, but but it's better. It's getting it's, it's better. It's a big improvement. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I have to try when the weather drops again just to do that check. Um, yeah, but, I mean, but I, I would I think like I, to, I'd like to do that ionity test again because I did a cold weather ionity charge where I got a peak of forty-two kilowatts. I know. I, I think I, I I contacted you when I when I was doing one charge where I was oh, getting 30, right. 30, yeah. 30 kilowatt peak on on ionity. Um, which is definitely down to being cold. Now, yeah. uh, Jack Tams on the, on the Facebook forum was, did, suggested to me I ex- did a bit of fast acceleration before I get to a charger just to warm, warm things up a bit. And that definitely makes a difference. That, that yeah. gained about five kilowatts on, on the charger. Yeah. I mean, I, I again, I've got the capacity to check what the battery temperature is at any given time. Um, and I was arriving at that ionity with battery at 19 degrees. Yeah. So it should have been better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm told it's around thirty degrees. You need to have the battery temperature out to get get good decent charging. So, yeah. which is which is quite tricky to get without the battery being heated. Indeed, yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, that, I, that's definitely an improvement. I mean, I, I certainly yeah. noticed today I, on that NGN charger, I was get I was getting forty two peak, which um, I don't usually get anywhere near that on en- on though that type of NGN charger. That's the yeah. Actions. Um, I, I, on the APB chargers, I often get forty-eight. Feet, but, uh, yeah. What was really interesting, I was I was driving a, an MG ZS EV at the weekend. Oh, nice. And um, and I actually got higher peak charging on that than I do on the APBs. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they but I know what MG did was basically they went around to every charger in the country and adjusted their their software to match that rather than following the standard. Yeah, so, so it's 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 an interesting one. I mean, I've, I've said this before. I, I can imagine Jaguar Legal going, "Hang on, hang on, so you, you're tweaking away from the the, C, the CCS standard." Well, if someone gets electrocuted. <laughs> yeah, how are we can hold that up. Yeah, so yeah, I can I can see why they they want to follow standards as close as they can. Absolutely. Okay, so let's, let's get on to the meat of this thing then. So so the range update. Yeah. Um. Actually, just before we do that, there's one little extra thing I want to. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, which is the layout of the dash, the graphics. Oh yes, yeah, I forgot dash. about that. Yeah. The as I said um, to you the other day, the the Atari video game. The Atari video <laughs> game. Yes. <laughs> now, I must admit, when I first got it by, and I'd seen pictures of it before when this was first aired about six months ago, five six months ago, I think a few people got that dashboard upgrade. Let's call it. Um, and. When I got my car bike with it, initially I thought, no, I don't like it. But it is actually to read. I find it's much easier to read. It's much easier to get a good estimation of your state of charge at a glance. It is. It... Yeah, the other thing I, I noticed today when I was charging is if you've got the, the car switched on, often you, you have no visual indicator of the car's actually charging. Yeah. It, it does actually dynamically update that, that, that charge while you're charging. So you see the blobs going up. Okay, nice. I quite oh. like that. But you're right; you can you can see it better at a glance, which is the whole point of it. And they yeah, they also exactly. wanted to de-emphasize the the, the range, yeah, because it is just an estimate. So a charge is 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 real. Um, yeah. So you if you know you've done half your battery and you've done hundred miles, you're likely to be able to do another you've hundred miles. You've got a good chance of having hundred miles left, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's really quite good. Um, yeah. The only one, and I, I, my friend Nigel um, mentioned this to me the other day. The when it's great on single, it's okay on single dial. On dual dial, it looks really odd because you've got the massive 
M volt hour side yeah. one side, and then you've got this little tiny <laughs> range on the other side with the, the bar. Oh, it, looks, okay. it looks quite unbalanced. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, so aesthetically, I, I, I can see the challenges there, but but it definitely works really well. Yeah, I mean, I use one dial almost exclusively. Sometimes I have the full map, but for general Actually, day-to-day driving. Again, before we go on to the range, there's another thing we should mention there is the, the changes to the layout, which you can do in one dial now. Yes. Uh, so, cause one of my favourite things of the whole whole update is the fact I can now have my um, so, trip meter on my left-hand side of the screen and the map we, on the right agree. side. And, that, and that's changed agree. completely the way I, I use the car almost. <laughs> it's, yeah, same here. I mean, I, I had the media information on the left panel, even though it's down on the lower touch screen. Yeah. Just because I didn't want to have nothing there, and I, the driver assist is practically useless when you've got the HUD. Yeah, that's right. Well, I had the, I used to have driver HUD assist there, but with the HUD, you really didn't need it. Yeah. Um, and and you, and you still get some driver assist indi- indication of the the trip meter there. You can still see if it's on and the steering. Is exactly. On. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, and it, and it will switch to it when you want to adjust things like the, yeah. the distance ahead. But, Question yeah, so. for you as well. No. I don't know if this is my failing memory, <laughs> but on the on certainly on the single dial display, when you're in the different drive mode, you always had a coloured circle around the outside of the dial. Yeah. So it was green for eco, blue for comfort, red for dynamic, plus the you know the white band for dynamic. But I. And I checked one of my old videos, and it, it wasn't overly clear on it, but it looked like the actual needle itself was pure white. But now the needle is white, but there's a stripe down the middle of it, which is also green, blue, or yeah. red. I, I think that's changed as well. I yeah. don't think it's necessarily changed in this update, but because I, I'm, someone else I, has posted something on one of the forum, on the Facebook post about, about it, who's not had the H264 yet. Oh, okay. So I'm wondering if it came with one of the SOTA updates, but you wouldn't think that would affect that that, that console. Well, it shouldn't no. be able to. Be because able you to have to, the dashboard cluster needs a dealer visit. It does, yeah, it does indeed. So, so I don't know. Maybe maybe it's <laughs> maybe it's it, maybe they had maybe ah oh, maybe they had the, the 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 dashboard the dashboard update separately before because that was actually out there in the uh, wild. Yeah. Wasn't it? That's true. Yeah. So maybe that's why it is, and maybe it is H two six four with with that update. The but ice, whatever they, they call that uh, center console. Yeah, I know. IPC? Or I IPC, know. yeah. So it's yeah. got some strange, strange internal name. <laughs> it does, yeah. But but it was just one of those things. It took me a while to pin it down because I'm looking at it and thinking, something's changed. Yeah, something's different. Yeah. The same, same with the HUD. I, I had to get back to my video of the HUD to check this out. But the when you haven't got um, like driver assist running, the way it displays the lanes is now different slightly fuzzy lane type marking do you know you're saying that and i didn't twig but when i was driving with it on saturday i was looking at the hud and thinking or looking specifically at the driver assist and thinking that doesn't look right and then i convinced myself that it was just because it wasn't picking up the lanes at that moment in time um you know and i just thought oh it's probably the same as it's always been so now you've said that, that's probably what I was seeing before. Yeah, and I think it does make a bigger distinction between when it's on and when it's off, so it's probably a good thing. Yeah, but uh, yes. I still wish <laughs> well, it would give you a noise, but let's, <laughs> let's uh, move from that. I think I'd, I'd like it, if it, if it was a noise, I'd like it optional. Having driven the MG, which, which is um, notorious for the number of bongs it gives out. Oh, uh, yes, I've heard <laughs> So, so I did did a journey from Peterborough to Hinkley, and it gave sixty eight bongs in the in the time I was rowing from the Peterborough, <laughs> and they're all double bongs every time you. So, but every time you change lane, every time it switches off, dong 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 dong, <laughs> and it's really Ooh. loud as well. And MG call them chimes. The only chimes I've ever come close to that is Big Ben. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so so I'd rather not have bongs all the time or beeps. Yeah. But, but I'd, if it's optional, I don't mind. Um, yeah. And to be fair to MG, they are sorting that out as well. They're, they're very proactive. Yeah. So they're gonna, there is going to be an update in the new year which will fix that. Do they have an app yet? Or are they, still... they don't. And unlikely to have an app in UK Ooh. by release because the, the telematics module is not actually installed on the UK models. Oh, I did not realise that. Okay. So I don't know if it's something to do with legal because it seems to be only available in, in the Far East countries. 
where oh, maybe it's, it's maybe those... Thailand. Yes, because um, I don't think the European bottle's got it either. Um, oh, okay, it. yeah, maybe that the EU haven't done the certification for the radio. Something, yeah, maybe something yeah. like that. But there are third parties working on on things, so okay. and the, there is control available. Great car, though, really. I mean, yeah, as a yeah. second car. I mean, if, if anybody who's got an iPace wants a second car, slightly lower range, sort of 140 mile range, which seems yeah. to be genuinely 140 miles even in the winter. Um, yeah, yeah, great car, very comfortable to ride in, and the build quality is way better than I expected. Really? Um, yeah. Probably not surprising because SAIC, who are the parent company in China, also make also build VWs cars yeah. in China. And there's a lot of VW parts in this car, <laughs> or similar old parts thing. to VW. Yeah. Funny old thing, yeah. Even some of them actually stamped VW. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if VW are aware of that. Fight. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. But anyway, it seems seemed quite a good car. Um, yeah. What I did notice, actually, I know we're getting slightly astray here, here but one thing I, I, I did find quite interesting was the, uh, the adaptive cruise control on, on the um, MG. The rate, the one of the things I've always found with the i is it tends to sit really far back in its default settings. Yeah. Whereas the default setting in the in it, the MG is as as close as the, the closest setting you have in the i and it goes down from there. Okay. <laughs> so, so it was designed for China roads, isn't it? Yeah, obviously, <laughs> but it worked very very, very well. It was yeah. Really impressive, with that. and and the steering assist worked extremely well as well. So you're getting a lot of the stuff we get for the vast sum of money for. Yeah. Pounds, so you can't, you can't argue with that. You can't go wrong. Anyway. Anyway, let's get on to the range. Let's this is get the to the big, big point of this. <laughs> yeah. So Jaguar claiming 8% range increase. Um, I think I've seen slightly more than that. I have definitely seen more than that. So I did, I did a, a quite long journey today, and I've worked out on the average of what I've seen today, I, my full charge would be about 234 miles. Genuine. Right. Um, whereas well, I'm before, I'm on the 22s. Yeah. Obviously, 22 inch wheels for anyone that doesn't know what I'm talking about, which are notoriously range consuming. Indeed. Yep. Um, but I am getting a fairly consistent now that I've used it for a, a, a fair distance. Um, about well, at the moment, it's reporting 224 on a full charge. Yeah. Um, but anywhere between 220 and 230 on a full charge, which I think, if you remember our last video. I said, the one thing that would make me really happy would be if I could get 200 miles in the winter. Yeah. So I'd be, I'd be, we would have been happy with just 200 miles in the winter. Uh, yeah. But I'm definitely getting more than that. Um, now, one thing I have noticed is that today my range adjusted down quite rapidly um, when I started driving over a longer distance. I don't think it's been adjusting at all, I guess, to, while I've been doing my little short runs right. I do most days. Because most days I'm doing five mile runs, and yeah. they they consist of about uh, thirty seconds at thirty, and then the two minutes of at, at, at seventy, and then the rest at thirty. Yeah. So, which is absolutely the worst thing possible for range. It's not. Yeah, it would be, it it, you'd be getting a range of a hundred miles reported or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, the the um the the trip meter was showing fifty eight uh, kilo hours to hundred miles. <laughs> Wow, and you don't <laughs> use dynamic mode. <laughs> yeah, and that was economy. So, yeah, yeah. so, uh, but you do, it's all that startup cost. I mean, we, we yeah. know when you start a journey. So, it's only, only really realistic when you start going on longer journeys. Exactly. So, when, yeah. so when I kicked off this journey today, I, I lost 40 miles very, fairly rapidly. Okay. Um, over 20 miles. So, so, I lost 20 miles. Um, sorry, I lost 20 miles in range in, in, a, in a, a, a 20 mile journey. Right. <laughs> Over yes, I, do, yeah. I should have done. So they actually use 40 miles. Um, and then people, there's some people who think that's a really alarming thing, but I think that's a that's a really good thing personally because that was one of my slight issues before was I felt it just didn't accurately reflect your late accurately reflect your range yeah. until you'd done a good. You know, I mean it. It was 100. percent You know, it was a 500 mile sample it was taken, yeah. so you weren't getting a really good representation till you've done about 250 300 miles yeah and it was also 500 miles rolling over your journey so if you did a lot yep. of short journeys and then did a long journey you were getting a completely skewed figure exactly. on the long journey so so today was, was actually really interesting because it went it, it started off with a range that would, have, would have been about 260 in total mm. and gradually went down to about a range which would have been about 210 and yep. then it started going back up again 
So I think initially it just adjusted down because I was driving. I obviously started a journey, okay, got yeah. over a length of time, it was still that start up period. And then I gradually, I, I started getting, I had a long 70 mile an hour stretch in eco running on, and, and I was getting something phenomenal on that. That I mean, obviously the instant um, power is, is a bit difficult to actually keep yeah, it up. But I've never, I've, I've never seen it down to 10, 20 when I've been on 70 mile an hour. No. Even even on and this wasn't downhill. This was on flat. So it, it was just getting some momentum and to yeah. carry. Um, and and that trip actually averaged at thirty eight kilo hours per hundred miles, which is pretty good. That's nice. I think that was impressive at this time of year. Anything under forty, like, anything under forty is amazing. Exactly. Yeah. And because we're now, we've, so the other thing we should mention is we're able to use a bit more of the battery now than we were. Before. Yeah. So whereas before we were effectively able to use 82 kilowatts, we're now able to use 84 kilowatts. Yeah. And minus a bit. In round numbers. Yeah. In round numbers, there's, there's a plus amount of it there. Yeah. Um, so that, and that's basically by allowing you to go a bit lower in the tank and using a bit more volume. Exactly. So if you think about that, that means that if we anything under well 40 and under, you're you're, you're effectively going to get 200 miles. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, I don't think I've seen any long journey I've ever done where, where the car's done less, more than 40 since I've had the H264. No, no. Even, I mean, my journey, as I was saying to you prior to, the, to doing the video, uh, my journey on Saturday was up into the Highlands. So the way there, obviously, was, was yeah. a lot of uphill. <laughs> um, and I was still getting, you know, the four, uh, 40 just over 40 I, I would have to look up the number but it was it was about 42 which is really good for going up hills yeah those sort of hills anyway oh yeah exactly i mean some of those are, are, are hills <laughs> yeah not my sort of hills yeah <laughs> so i was i was very impressed with the, the performance of it in terms of range um so i think there are a couple of negatives um i one, you, one you've got which which i'm not seeing quite so much but I'm wondering if that's actually because I haven't done multiple step journeys. So, so let's talk about your state of charge issue. Okay. When I did the trip, by luck, if luck is the right word, I tried to do the same journey the week before. And thanks to a Scottish pothole. Uh, oh, my, oh, your pothole damage was <laughs> something to behold. <laughs> it was, yes. Yeah. So my Pirelli P0 got wiped out. Um, luckily, the wheel wasn't damaged. But the Pirelli got uh, damaged to the point where it was still drivable, but I wasn't about to do a 280 mile journey on it. So we abandoned it and did it the following week. In between the two trips, H264 was was applied to the car. So I actually had, a, a, interestingly, I had the journey plan with the predicted state of charge for the old trip and for the new trip, identical trips, and could therefore do a direct comparison. But I was getting some very strange numbers. Um, so it was 140 miles there, 140 miles back. Prior to H264, my car was saying I would arrive there with 19% state of charge. Yep. After H264, it was saying I would arrive with 40%. Now that seemed like, a, you know, I mean, when you're talking about 8% range increase, that suddenly an order of magnitude above that. <laughs> um, but we set off anyway. It, and it was it was a strange system, but it was the very last leg of a four-leg journey. I had four waypoints on the journey, the last one being the destination. Um, the first two legs, or the first three legs, were fairly accurate. But the last one was really badly out, like severely out. And then on the way back, you know, so I, we ended up arriving on that final leg. I can't remember the exact numbers. I think it was 29% I was supposed to use or 24% I was supposed to use. But we used about 38 or 39%. It, it, the point was that on that final fairly short part of the journey, we used way more electricity than we were supposed to. Um, to such an extent that where I charged up, I was supposed to get back to the charger with loads of charge, I ended up with a low battery warning and getting back to it with about 7%. And that's not good because you because we've mentioned this before that that 
state of charting on the on the map is one of the best things they introduced. Yeah, and the fact I, it used to be so accurate. Yeah. Um, so, but anyway, that wasn't really the issue. I had. <laughs> sorry, I kind of went off on a tangent yeah, there. But yeah. I needed to do the intro, you know, to explain yeah. how how it worked on the way there. But it's now doing this very strange thing, and it did it on the way back. It was the first time it did it was on the way back from that trip. Um, and I tested it today, and and uh, again, I'll put up the screenshots to show you. But basically, when I'm doing the planning. For example, if I sit down now and planned it on the sat nav in the car, it will come up and it will say that I'm going to arrive at 40%. Yeah. I then set off, and within minutes of setting off, that drops to 11%. <laughs> yeah, that, that's worrying. Now, I did, as you know, I did a couple of journeys today and I tested mm. doing the state of charge on, on mine, and I didn't see that, which is interesting. But I wasn't doing multi step journeys, so I'm wondering if that's something to yeah. do with it. It almost felt like that was what it was down to. It would be possibly interesting to just do it as a single journey to destination and see what it comes up with. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's, it's a very odd phenomenon because it just suddenly, like in the blink of an eye, all the numbers change quite dramatically downwards. Now, we, now we know that the, the navigation system is supplied by a second company. It's here. here yeah. perhaps. We also know that the... Um, in the entertainment system is on a separate a set of updates. We've had a 19C update, but I didn't mention anything about anything for IPAX, really. Yeah. Um, um, I know there's a likely to be a 20A update yeah. in the new year. I wonder if they're going to address some of the stuff, because one thing I do know is that the API is now wrong for a lot of figures. Um, yeah. Talk about Wildcat earlier. Yeah. That was the reason he had the problems with the the, state, the health figures, because they're, they're completely yeah. wrong after... after um, the update and that's partly because it no longer knows what size the battery is yeah because it's, it's uh, all the calculations seem to still be done on the 82 kilowatts whereas actually yeah. it's actually 84 and i wonder if that's the same thing here that we're not getting quite the full range yeah loud but it, that doesn't really explain why it works for some and not for others doesn't it? exactly and yeah. it also kind of doesn't explain the sudden drop unless unless it's using assumed figures for the planning calculations and then it's getting the real figures after a couple of minutes, mm. and it's thinking that you've used that much. So it's yeah. suddenly, you, you see what I mean, you know? Yeah, you get suddenly getting real usage figures because, because we are now. Because neither the weird thing is neither of the two figures was accurate. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst thing, isn't it? <laughs> the before one was had me getting there with way more state of charge than I would have, and the after one had me getting there with way less. Yeah, you know. So there's there's I it almost. And I'm just thinking this through now, but that's almost what it feels like is it suddenly thinks, oh, hang on, I've gone from this much to this much very quickly. He must be using 60 kilowatt hours per 100 miles or something, you know, yeah. and suddenly revises all the figures. Um, but it didn't do it on the way there. It started doing that on the way back. Yeah. I, can't, I mean, you can certainly see that from a cold start, you might actually have a very high consumption for the first few minutes, which if it was reacting instantly, would would be a problem. But it's yeah. never done that in the past, so why would it suddenly start doing that? Interesting, because on the way there, I preconditioned. Yeah. And it didn't uh, do it on the way there. That's worth a test. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, when I, I did my test today, I'd been driving for quite some time before I started using state charts because I had of been, course, yeah. I, I've been trying testing out the new Android Auto beta I've got. Yeah. Uh, before that point, um, and and I didn't see any issues with it. Yeah. Uh, that that in fact that was more accurate than the guesser meter was on the way back. Yeah. So interesting. Interesting. On the way back, I I did play a bit because I came across this wonderful piece of road which was sort of rolling hills and corners and you could see for miles. So you could you knew if anything was coming. So yeah, you could play a bit. Right? You had to play on the corner. Um, and that really threw through the guesser meter. It it it, it, yeah. it dropped like a stone from that because it obviously it suddenly. What's he doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he doesn't drive like this normally. It's, <laughs> which I think is, is something I, I always get this because people expect that meter to be accurate. Oh, I know. I, 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 how can it possibly be accurate? It's got. It's yeah. only going to be as good as your driving. It's almost. Exactly. I, I guess the only time it would ever be accurate is if you were response. All your driving was done on adaptive cruise control, and you just let the car to car drive. Then it would have a fairly good degree of knowledge of as to. Yeah, and even then, it would have to be on a 
really boring road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the same road, every flat, yeah. flat, flat, no corners, straight flat, no corners, <laughs> motorway or whatever, yeah. dual carriageway. Yeah, but I think now it does a really good job. Yeah, because uh, other than when I did that bit playing, up to then it had been absolutely spot on. It, yeah. After the initial bit where it had done all the adjustment. For the next 40 miles or so, it was absolutely spot on. Mile for mile, I was using what it was saying I was using. Yeah. On the, you know. That's what I notice now is that it's very rare for it to do that, you know, sudden drop thing where you think, I've just done 10 miles and it's saying I've used 20 miles, yeah. which is difficult for people to get their heads around because they think that that means they've used 20 miles of the battery. It's, yeah. it's quite a difficult concept to grasp when you're new to EVs. But it doesn't seem to do that so much now. It's much more consistent yeah. at tracking your mileage, you know. So if it, which is why I believe the 220, 230 mile range report, because when I do 40 miles on that, it drops by about 40 to yeah. 42, 43 miles, you know. So, I mean, uh, the other thing, I, I, I've never seen this, even in summer. I get to 50%, I've still got over, over 112 miles red range left. I mean, that's just like, yeah. even even back in the summer days when I used to get 220, 230 predicted, I would never get that reality. No, exactly. I, I mean, I, I, when we arrived, we arrived in the Highlands with 48%. And again, I'll drop the screenshot in, but from memory, I think at 48%, it was reporting 110 miles of range. Crazy. I mean... In winter, I mean, it was a the temperature on the way there was fairly consistent between two, never got above five, and never got below two, so between two and five degrees. Oh, you really can't argue with that. <laughs> exactly. Hope, hopefully, our Norwegian friends are, ha are happier now as well, because that's obviously one of the main reasons for this update has been their their issues with charging. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in the cold, so yeah. I, I mean, mean, they have winters. <laughs> they definitely have winters. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, and I'm hoping this is just a little glitch. I mean, I'm not kicking up a fuss about this little issue. Well, it could be a big issue if you over relied on it. But um, with the state of charge, it's only on the sat nav. It's, I mean, just for the viewers, you know, it's when you have that root remaining oh, yeah, display on the sat nav. Um, so the left third of your sat nav, or the right third if you're driving. In, in Europe or America, but that portion of the screen shows you your state of charge now, your predicted state of charge at your next waypoint, the waypoint after that, and your destination. So the car is predicting what your what your state of charge is going to be at the end of your journey, um, or at each waypoint, in fact, on your journey. So that's the issue. It's not the the GOM. It's that sat nav prediction of of and. Prior to H264, for me, and I know for you, Gary, because we talked about this, it was very, very accurate. Yeah. So I'm hoping that this is going to be a short-term glitch and that once the car gets, gets acclimatized, if you like, to the new consumption figures and the new uh, available uh, range of the battery, I'm hoping that it will just start to adjust itself to to the right figures, but it it's not something I've heard people kicking off about. Yeah, I don't know how many people actually use it. I mean, I know we do because yeah. it's, it's such a good thing, and particularly for the planning side of things, it's the best way of planning. Well, yeah, it's the best it way was. that but it was <laughs> the best way of planning. Um, so I, I think. It will be nice to see that fix. I'm just, I mean, I was saying about 28, but the other th thing is it may be just an API change. I don't know how here you actually get that information. You kind of think they might have to pull it across from the, the API somehow, um, whether they've got a direct link to the car for that. I, I don't know how, how those systems interact. Yeah, that's a, well, I guess the exact state of charge and it updates it very quickly. See, the API is quite a slow response. Yeah, it is, API. yeah. So yeah, so you would think it must be. Um, it must be actually drawn it direct from the onboard diagnostic system, I think. Yeah, that's got. I should guess it, I mean, navigation systems do have into in, in those, so. Yeah. Would make some sense to do that. Yeah, but anyway, I mean, as I say, it's it's a glitch which I would rather wasn't there, 
but I, I, it's not something I want to make out to be a, a, a massive deal because once you know, yeah, then you can you know. work it around it. It's, it's the first time it happens that kind of catches you off guard a bit. I, I, I can't think I'd trade that for the range increase, actually. <laughs> exactly. If that, if, I'm like, if that's obviously. the cost. Yeah, yeah, that's the cost. I'm hoping it's not the cost, but that's it. Yeah. And I said to you the, the other day, this this whole thing with H264, it's it's like Jaguar have given me a new car for Christmas. It's, yeah. It's so, it's so different. It's not it's not just minor tweaks. This is a big change. Yeah, I mean, it, it does. I mean, in fact, I was just saying that to somebody this morning. It it feels like a new car. It really does. Um, wow. Well. And the regen, I mean, we, we didn't even... Oh, yeah, let's, let's talk about regen, because this... Yeah. I mean, this, to me, is just the, the best one of the... Again, so there's two parts to this, really. Is it, There's the fact that you can actually get regen at a higher batch state about charge. Yeah. So you haven't got that, that you've got to 100%, and the car feels differently when you start driving it, yeah. because you haven't got any regen. You've now got some regen to play with at that point. It still feels different, but it's less... Different, yeah. You still get a bit of regen. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. Whereas before, you quite often got no, well, so many. It felt like no. no, no at all. And the other thing which they've done is they've improved the regen at low speed. Yeah. Um, and that's really noticeable. That's where you get the one pedal driving type of. Exactly. You, you can I mean, you can bring the car to a stop now. You can, yeah. As long as you're not on a hill, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if I'm flat, you can bring it to a stop yeah. quite easily. And I did several times a day when I was driving. Well. Yeah, I, I use it a lot. Now, the other thing I actually not have noticed is I'm getting a lot more kilowatts hours regened on the stats. Yes, I've noticed that as well because my, I'm like you, my my commute is is very short. My my daily drive, if you like, is is actually a really short drive. It's seven miles there, seven miles back, but it's a consistent seven miles. So it's it's a good one to do these kind of comparisons with. Mm-hmm. But I prior to H two six four, I would regularly regen almost without fail 0.6 kilowatt hours and now i'm regening about 0.8 yeah and I, I've, I've actually seen something more than that so on my little jaunt which i do every day mm. um so one it's different one way to the other way but the going outbound um i used to get 0.4 kilowatt hours regen i'm now getting 0.8 so it's effectively doubled yeah um, and I, I, now Part of that is because on bits of it, I used to have to use the brakes. I don't use the brakes at all now, so I'm regenerating to, to, to come to a halt on stuff. Now, obviously, it does change depending on whether the traffic lights are red or not. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I mean, but, there are obviously but, going to be variations, but, but because I do that fairly consistent. But because I do that journey, uh, not just once a day, probably I, I do two or three times a day, so I, I can get a good average on that, which I have been able to do. Um, so yeah. yeah, so so dramatic improvement. Um, In fact, point on... nine. Sorry, I just checked. So I was just checking while you were talking yeah. there. Point nine. I'm regening. Yeah, yep. really good. Um, which obviously makes a huge difference. If you Indeed, if you can, yeah. so today's journey, I gained three and a half kilowatt hours on the battery, which yep. is quite a few miles now. But, well, yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> the other thing. Is it's it's a, just a law of. Uh, it's almost a, a perpetual motion machine at times, but it, it becomes a situation where you re, you regen more, which improves your range, but the amount you regen gets you more range because the car's more efficient anyway. So you're yeah. you get <laughs> you more regen, place. and you get more range. You know, even if you regen the same amount, you would get more range from that. So you're regening more and getting more range, and it just you know it. Things like that all add up. They're all small improvements, which add up to make quite a significant difference, in fact. But, so the other things they've done with this to improve the range is that the active flaps. Um, yeah. In, uh, the way they, those work. I actually heard them today for the first time. And I don't usually hear them coming in, but <laughs> coming out. But I did, did actually, I think I was quite worried. And something sort of went were at the front of the car. And I thought, What's that? and then just the hearing of I thought, oh, yeah, I've heard that when the, the uh, iPace Racing's been on, where they, they, they showed it. It's that, it's that noise of the flap opening and shutting. Yeah. So, uh, so that basically improves the, it's all about how much airflow's going over the battery. Exactly. Um, yeah. and, and obviously, if it's shut, it improves the aerodynamics. So, yeah. um, and this was shutting about 65 miles an hour. So it was obviously able to take advantage of a bit better aerodynamics. That yeah, sense, yeah. Which is definitely a good idea. Um, yeah. 
also allows the battery to warm up a bit more because they're not cooling quite so much, which is exactly, probably a good, thing, yeah. a good thing under this. So I think that's that's a big learning, Nate, because a lot of this this has come from the, the racing. Yeah, um, exactly, from and the they've done, trophy. Yeah, the e-trophy racing. And they've been able to get so much stats from that. Um, and obviously they're running running the batteries of, uh, at uh, in levels which we, we wouldn't reach normally in day-to-day driving. Um, exactly, yeah. And so they can see what the deterioration is like, what the effect of having the batteries is. Because obviously a lot of the reasoning for not doing this in the past is to preserve the batteries. You want to see make sure they're going to last a long exactly. time. They don't want too many warranty claims on the batteries. It's, it's expensive. Um, so, but I think as as with Tesla, um, that they found over time that they could loosen the parameters a bit. And, exactly, and, yeah. And, and I think that's, that's similar to the charging thing as well. You know, it's... They've played it safe with everything they've done, which I don't see as a bad thing. And then once they've got enough data, they're happy to start yeah. pushing the envelope a little. Which is good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, other than your, your the status charge thing, I can't see anything wrong with this data. No, it's exactly. Just... <laughs> and, and like I say, it's a very small thing. And especially once you start on the route, it it kind of starts to correct itself by the looks of it now. Mm. So I'm hoping that after a little bit of time, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be something that just won't be there anymore. You know, it won't be an issue at all. I'm hoping yeah. just, the car will just gradually recalibrate. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if that's the case. Because if you think about it, when we got that update, we would have had a lot of driving the data because it wouldn't have been reset. Yeah, exactly, that, yeah. When we actually got that state chart. So maybe it is going to be something which appears yeah. over time. Because obviously this update is quite a big update. It's affecting a lot of modules, and they are being fully reset. So yeah. you'd expect that. Um, so I, think, I, I mean, this is a dealer-only update. You have to get to a dealer. If you can get it, find a dealer who's got any slots available to get you yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I can't recommend this highly enough to anybody watching. If you haven't had it done, it really is worth it. And I've read some horror stories on the internet of people saying, don't do it, don't do it. It's... It's going to cause you problems, you know, keep your car the way it is, don't have it done. But I, as we've said, and I don't think we can stress it enough, it is like a new car. It is. And, and having spoken to um, quality at Jaguar quite a bit recently, they, now I don't know if it's just dealers not passing on information, but they know of no, no actual case where this update has caused an issue. I've read of one. Yeah, I, I've read of one as well, but but they, they you know. the Jaguar Jaguar don't know know about that that particular issue. So it, it's yeah. Um, so what's I mean, obviously there are some interesting messages coming out from some dealers which are contradicting what's actually happening in reality. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> um, we all know what you're talking about. <laughs> Which I which I know JLR are a bit upset about at the moment, but I'm sure that will get sorted one way or the other. Hopefully um, so. <laughs> hopefully so. But uh, yeah, so I mean, this is a tricky update, but it is automated. I mean, they they just got to follow the steps. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of the issues with this is is that if we've got several owners wanting their device cars done on the same day, most of these dealers have only got one iPace technician. iPace specialist, yeah. yeah. And actually, I'm told some of this. To get some of these updates done is actually a two-man job. So you, someone to press the buttons and someone to put the gates in the right places. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they and they only I think they get paid two hours or two and a half hours work for, for it. So yeah. Um, so you could see there might be some dealer pressure if this was taking longer. And yeah. Cut corners, whatever. Um, exactly. But, yeah. But I'm I'm told so there was a, there was some confusion. Um, people have been seeing different versions of H264 appearing on topics if they look at topics yeah so there's v1 v2 v3 now the software has always been at the i'll say v3 so at stage but at, at what is documented in v3 there's no so, change to the software itself it's, it's just a documentation on how to do the update yeah uh, and, and making it very step by step and trying to hold people's hands all the way through it yeah um, Shouldn't be necessary, but it, it, it's fairly documented actually on their their Pathfinder system where, where they actually go through to do the updates. Yeah, I've seen some of that, and it it looks very straightforward to actually run it, but I'm told to not. But um, there, there's a one of the Jag, I, iPace technicians who works with one of the dealers is actually on the Facebook forum, and he was saying this is really easy. It's, why are people having so much trouble with it? <laughs> <laughs> He's done about twenty of them, and no issues at all. So um, I actually I I do wonder though because a lot of this 
I think a lot of these problems that dealers have is down to their network connectivity. I think some of the dealers yeah, have, this is have struggled. I've, I've heard a few people, uh, my Jaguar contact kind of suggested that that could be an issue as well, and we've hypothesized over it. I think you're quite, did your uh, personal quality uh, mention something along those lines as well? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, I, it would appear that that could be something to do with it. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think it's just as possible that some people are trying to cut corners or some, yeah. some technicians are kind of zapping through in the old, oh, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, of, don't, yeah, that's why. Or, being, or, or under pressure to get things through the doors, which is, indeed, which is yeah. equally so. Um, but they are getting paid for doing this update, so they shouldn't be arguing to do it. Exactly. Uh, I mean, I've heard some people not being able to get bookings until February, March time. For, wow. Uh, now, so uh, in certain dealers now that's kind of understandable it would be after christmas now because <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, but and, and probably after the end of the year because people are going to be shut down now for the next couple of weeks yeah. but every march time you'd think they could do it i mean it is a two-hour update i mean i, I actually my update took i, I saw someone do it, it took took an hour hour and 40 minutes yeah <laughs> so plus the checks at the end may taking up to two hours so yeah yeah, I mean, mine wasn't a long process, but I can't give you an actual time because I had the tire done. Yeah, at the same time. <laughs> on the same visit, so. <laughs> so, tire tires all okay now? It's not. <laughs> yeah, the tire is perfect. I mean, um, and it cost me twenty five pounds for a brand new Pirelli P zero. That's not bad. So, yeah. So actually, one thing I posted posted a couple of weeks back on I think I only posted on Facebook. Was, um, I actually had a smart repair done on my alloy. Yes, uh, which is quite interesting because I was I'd, on your alloy. Yeah, so, oh, so well, I had, I've, well, I've actually had two smart repairs done. I've had one ah. done on the wing mirror and one on the alloy. Right. So the wing mirror. So um, these were both covered by the insurance the company took out with the company car. Um, smart repair on the, the wing mirror was fantastic. I have to say that looks as good as any paint job I've ever seen. Um, I'm told it's a chemical bond. It's not even paint, so it's, it's sort of, how that works, so, I'm not quite sure. So, what does it kind of dissolve the paint that's there? <laughs> yeah, and, but it, I mean, obviously, it's over plastic that bit. I'm, so yeah. it's, I'm not too worried if it does. If it, it wasn't as as thick a bit of paint as the rest of the work was, but uh, yeah, that's, that's good. But then the alloy one, I was really impressed with. Um, so, I'd, I'd scrape. I'd done a bit of curb rash. I caught. I caught a, as as I think virtually every other post driver has done at some point. Caught caught one of the, the Pillars on on all on the bits on a, a, park, a car park. Uh, <laughs> Touch word. Not yet. <laughs> no, certainly, a lot of people in the Facebook group. Yeah. Um, and mind you, having said that, I've now learnt to use a 360 camera to avoid that, so I don't do it anymore. But did this yeah. really really early on, and it's, it's been there for a while, and it's been bugging me a bit. But I hadn't actually realised we had the, the alloy cover, so got that out, and the guy um, basically did it out out in the in the car park, and uh, came up and rubbed it all down and painted it up and masked off the tire but one thing he, he did tell me was that he should have actually rejected the the the, the thing because the color the tires actually had um gloss on them it's the, the, the sort of tire tire bright stuff you can, oh yeah yeah silicon tire bright which apparently the jag dealers love putting on the tires when they they do it on mine every time it goes <laughs> yeah. in uh... Yeah. Uh, and that's a nightmare when you want to put the paint on because it mixes with the paint as it's been sprayed on and oh. um, because it obviously gets onto the wheel as well as the tyre, yeah, and and causes all sorts of issues. So they actually now reject anything which has got tyre bar on it. <laughs> so, so that's something to be good, aware of. Good to know, yeah. So yeah, but 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 had, so to say, exceptionally good job. We, yeah, I can't tell where the repair was done. So, so and you know it's there. So yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew where it was, and I actually don't. I can't actually work out where it was now, but I do know where it was. So um, yeah, yeah, very very good job. So really impressed with that. Yeah. Um, so so you've really got a new eye piece then. You've yeah, got... I have. It's brand new, brand new. <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah, I mean, I I just to I guess as a quick summary, um, I have to say, I'm very impressed. I'm very happy with it. Um, I also wonder with my little issue if it's maybe down to me being on the old telematics, which may. Oh, yes, of course, you're still on 14.2, aren't you? I'm still on 14.2, yeah. So th there is a possibility that that's contributing to it. Um, so, so one of the things that this update is supposed to have done is, is allow SOTA of the telematics 
So hopefully we'll, we'll see. Exactly. I mean, I checked yeah. that, but there's no update available. Um, so. And I was told that one thing they're trying to do, um, they won't commit to it yet, but um, the charge and speed update, they're going to try and provide that as an over-the-air one. Yeah, yeah, I'd heard that as well. If they ever decide what they're actually going to do on that update. <laughs> if they ever decide what they're going to do on it. Talking about the over-the-air, one thing we ought to mention, because we did mention it last year, our little issue we had with our over-the-air. Indeed, yes. So so if people may remember, we, we both had, um, when we went to check for updates, we had a screen which just said what updates were about and didn't actually yeah. get the versions. Keep your car <laughs> up to date and it will be brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I know. Uh, and, and we all wondered if we were actually going to get updates. Now, when I had my H.264 one done, I think the, the, the dealer pushed um, 18... 19 C. Yeah, 19 C. 19 C. <laughs> yeah. um, at that point, and, and my screen came back, and then a few hours later, I got 19 C. But you actually didn't get your screen back. My screen stayed on the, why don't you update your car, and it will be great, page. <laughs> but then you did get... But then... You know, 19C got pushed to the car, even though I couldn't manually check for updates, because that was the problem that we were having, is the check for updates buttons just weren't there. That whole page was just a message saying, yeah. over oh, there, updates are a great thing. But <laughs> they you are. Actually, you couldn't actually access them. But without, even without me being able to check for updates, it just, um, it just got pushed to the car. I got the pop-up menu over the top of the main infotainment screen, just saying, new which version is, ready. Which is really good. Yeah, good, so good, good. so it installed, and now that page is back to how it should be. So I've got the check for updates. Because that that was really good. Because I'd I'd pushed that back to my contacts at Jaguar, and they they said there's going to be sort of a silent update, which is going to fix this for for people. And they obviously yeah. did. So that, that's excellent. I know. Yeah, it's really. They, said, they definitely seem to be getting the hang of this whole connected vehicle concept. And again, I think they've taken it carefully um, and conservatively by doing infotainment first to get the hang of it and to make sure the systems that they had in place worked, I think was actually really clever because if your infotainment dies, you can still get home. Yeah, which is good. So, and I think it's really good they're doing it now because obviously we are starting to see a ramp up of iPay sales. Um, I think the company car tax thing coming in April is going to be huge. I mean, yeah. when, when, I, when I took my car in for the dealers to be updated, they had 16 iPaces sitting outside. Wow. I've never seen more than two there before. Yeah. So, so I think that there's definitely a, um, there, there's some sales going on. Um, and I was yeah. trying to, to also talking to a, a friend of mine who works in the trade, and he was saying that there is a, a real shift from petrol, diesel to, to electric going with the company car purchase. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, that's, and I've seen some amazing deals for National Health Service deal for the iPaces. It's incredible. If you work for the NHS, you should go and get yourself an iPaces. Really, yeah. <laughs> really Sadly, I don't. But <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good. Deal. And I've already got one. But apart yeah. from that, it's a great plan. I, I'd have another one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair point. Yeah, I could have yeah. two. Good deal. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I think that the introduction of the two extra modules for for over the air updates. Um, will mean that we'll have less of these requires a dealer visit type of although, packages. Yeah, although, although I was talking to a couple of people about that the other week, and they they were slightly worried about the idea of of something as as important as the battery module being updated over the over the air. But Tesla do it all the time, so exactly. I mean, I think that's the thing for me is I've been probably much like yourself. I've had my eye on what Tesla has been doing for years long, you know, long before the iPace came along. And it doesn't seem as alien to me as probably it does to somebody that's, that's yeah, not had yeah, that yeah, 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 perspective, you know? So great stuff. So um, I think that's just about wrapped up everything. We I, I think we've that. pretty much covered everything I've got. Here. Oh, actually, no, there was one thing, one other thing I did want to mention. Because oh, you're like a lumbo, you. I, I, one more thing. <laughs> one more thing. <laughs> one more thing. Um, I just, I, I actually had a chance to try one of Alpha Power's 22 kilowatt chargers, the C ones. Mm -hmm. don't, don't you see these? So, so the idea behind these is, is that they're very um, small units, which you can plug in. They can effectively plug into their AC lines. So if they've got a 22 kilowatt AC line somewhere, they can convert it to a DC fast charger. 
or at least 22 oh, kilowatts okay, frequency, yeah. which is great for people with eye paces and uh, and other cars which only have seven kilowatt exactly, charging yeah. units. So you get that benefit of having that 22 kilowatt charge, but it's something you can actually use. Yeah. All oh, right. So, is it a mobile unit then, or is it? No, it's 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 a it's a, a wall mount unit. It basically right. places places the AC charger, so they can. Oh, okay. I get the impression they can either in charge install it as the original installed if they're going to put one. Of, so, where they would normally have put a three phase twenty two kilowatt AC charger in, they offer the ability to put a twenty two kilowatt oh, okay. charger in, in in its place, and there are a few of them popping up around my one neck of those in out of the way places where it would be difficult to get higher speed charging yeah so where whereas you would normally we would normally have been limited to seven kilowatt charging so 22 kilowatts is actually quite usable charge speed it is uh, if, yeah, you need, if you need a few miles in, in, in an hour to get somewhere it's it's a especially now with our range increases it's, it's well a, yeah exactly yeah. no that is a that's a fairly significant and useful thing to be honest um so, so especially I, I, if and we still don't know yet, but if there's charging, up, or if H264 rather, hasn't fixed the charger problem, that would be a great alternative for an, an emergency job. Yeah. If, you're, if your car won't charge on the DC CCS, you know. But yeah. hopefully that's going to be not an issue going forward. Oh, I, I don't think know. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be an issue going forward. But but I certainly, I mean, I think this is a really good idea. It's also yeah. a great idea, I think, for our Dutch and Norwegian um, fellow yep. I-Pacers who who are obviously in the majority, especially in Holland, have three phase. Yeah, a lot in, of them, and, and can't even get seven kilowatts on AC. Exactly. So yeah. This would give them an option to have a, potentially something like this at home. And I know there are some Chinese manufacturers making these DC, AC to DC chargers at a price, but they're yeah. coming down rapidly in price. Uh, I think this is this is possibly the future for charging because although obviously fast charging has an effect on batteries, I don't see 22 kilowatt fast charging having an effect on the battery. I mean, JLR even say 50 kilowatts is is yeah. negligible. They don't consider that to be fast charging and in, in terms of battery yeah. you know degradation so 22 yeah you're not going to see anything yeah so i think that's probably the future yeah now that's a that's a, a useful thing to have one other thing one other thing one more thing <laughs> uh, just and it may be coincidence but when i was going on that trip on saturday i realized that on the friday night oh i forgot to set the departure time in the car and i set it on the app which usually doesn't work. Yes, yeah. But it did, um, is the short version of that story. <laughs> well, that's, well that's, that's good. If that works consistently, that's really good. Again, could be a one-off, could be a fluke, but it, it did. I set it on the app from the living room, and I just thought, oh, you know, if it doesn't work, it, you know, I'll, I'll manually, tell, you know, set the AC running. But I, I checked half an hour before we were set to go, and it said the AC was already running, so... And when I looked at the batteries on my uh, OBD thing, it was uh, they'd warmed to 29 degrees. Fantastic stuff. Yeah. So, so we've had some great Christmas presents from JLR. I wonder what they're going Absolutely. to bring in the new year in the new year to keep us happy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They say they've set the bar high now, so our expectations are through the roof. We need that. We we want that every three months now, please, Joe. Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's been good. <laughs> Thanks yep. for your time, time as ever. <laughs> Thank you for yours. It's been uh, as enjoyable as ever. Well, as for me, I don't know about the viewers, but as for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let, let's hope we can get the next show. And so we'll, tr we'll try and get um, RFD on for the who does the um, what quite app because he's got yep. an awful lot of knowledge um, and will give us, give us a different perspective as well because he's obviously based out, 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 I think he's in Norway. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure good. it is. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. But okay, until then, well, well, we'll try and get that set up for some time in the future. Yeah, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll I'll catch you soon. We have no doubt we'll be chatting in the meantime anyway. Of we will indeed. But to all the, everybody out there who's watching this, uh, as it's that time of year, uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and and a very happy and high pacey New Year. Indeed, I wish you many updates in the year to come. <laughs> <laughs>